here with Tyler from Magnum Creek. You're the Sparky. Yeah. Why is it imperative that we have an electrician actually look at the job? 100% you want a qualified electrician to do any of the electrical work, especially if it's in your, your home or your, your shop or your office. <laughs> Do you recommend permits for something like this? 100% recommend permits. It's really important that we're here to advise you to do things properly, which is why you have to consult an electrician. This is not something that should be undertaken by yourself, especially when it comes to AC work or playing with live power in a breaker panel. This is paramount. You're standing in a puddle on an aluminum ladder. Yeah. It can get you. Back in the early days, of the industry, yeah. we would lose a customer every couple of years to yeah. a electrical a fire and electrocution. Electrocution, yeah. and, and it, it happened. You know, playing mm -hmm. with the power coming out of a capacitor. Yep. You know, it's so amped up, they can kill you. Yep. Obviously, residential wiring a house is going to be a lot different than wiring a greenhouse. Um, we have to follow proper protocol. In this case, we follow a greenhouse. It's kind of a law we work by for greenhouses. Yeah. So all their conduit, all their plugs have to have um, wet location ratings on them. Mm -hmm. We get inspected mm -hmm. by the local authority. Really important to yeah. take heed yeah. and learn from the pros that know the codes, yeah. that understand the permits to make sure that yeah. uh, your garden uh, reaches its full potential. 100%, yeah. It's nice to walk away from a place knowing that it's safe. It's 100% safe and that your client should have nothing to worry about. Yeah, trying to throw together a garden on a budget and skipping a few steps, you either pay now or you pay later. Yep. If someone has a two car garage and just wants to get started, how would they determine all the parameters um, needed in a garden? You can start with a load calculation, a simple load calculation on a house, whether they have a dryer, a stove, AC for their house, that all takes up the power that you might want to use for your indoor garden. Yeah. Yeah, so we start with a simple low calculation. So once you've figured out how much power you have available, then you can assess how much amperage you're gonna draw, what kind of lights you're gonna run, and assess all the components within that after. Yeah, correct. So this build, obviously, we wanted to look at making it the most efficient as possible comes down to your AC. In this typical room, we have a small split unit. Doesn't take too much power, about 20 amps maximum. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have two really efficient dehumidifiers. We also had to take into account eight lights. We are pulling LEDs, which includes our maximum efficiency. Um, Trollmaster, great product. Pretty much only need to plug it in. Barely no draw on it. And uh, everything else out of that is around low voltage. That's another Key element to loading up your room, electrically wise, um, it takes out a lot of aspects of line voltage that yeah. you need extra breakers for. One of the obviously big topics is the switch from HPS to LED. The big thing with electricity is obviously heat. The old school metal halides and the high pressure sodiums, they, you know, they tend to give us a lot of heat, especially with the thousand watt mm -hmm. bulbs. Yeah. In the other case, you have LEDs, so you can still have a thousand watt LEDs. But they still run a lower BTU. They still run a lower BTU and a better light spectrum as well, so. What typically do you see in a garden where the most common problems are when it comes to electrical? I think the most common problems are with amateurs and not so much amateurs are uh, overloaded circuits. Guys think there's a plug on the wall, they can just start loading up that plug. Well, they run into trouble when they've plugged into a 15 amp household circuit mm -hmm. and they got 20 fans going off of it. And they think it should be good e even if it's good for the first five hours to plug it in. Well, what happens sometimes is either that wire is melting or the breaker is tripping. Yeah. It's so not typical to where the industry came from is no extension cords. I noticed yeah. you guys talking about it yesterday when you were doing the install. Yep. There's not an extension cord going across the ground. It's just an area or room for yep. potential problems. It says in our code book, extension cords are not supposed to be meant for permanent plugins. Yeah. Only temporary and temporary only. So if you're gonna run that fan for the next two years off an extension cord, call an electrician, get a plug put in properly. Totally. If your electrical looks like a rat's nest, it's a potential for problems. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You've seen your fair share of potential oh, yeah. fires. Yep. What typically catches fire in the garden? 
Anything. Anything, <laughs> anything that's Walls, poorly wired. plastic, yeah. um, wires. Um, if, you, if you don't do your lows calculate uh, properly, you don't have your splices and junction boxes, um, those are all potential fire hazards for sure. Yeah, it's really cool that Magnum Creek is focused on this segment of the market. I've been to gardens you guys have set up. I've been to large commercial yeah. gardens and you know, your work that I've seen is exemplary, which is why when it came to us setting up our garden, we knew we could contact Magnum Creek and yeah. we knew we could get a quality job because we've seen time and time again your work in the marketplace. I'm really happy with the overall process, your ability to say, well, let's do this instead of that. I may know a few things, but you guys know a lot yeah. when it comes to setting up a garden. And yeah. uh, for that, we're super grateful. And uh, you guys were able to really step in here and knock it out of the park. Yeah. So thank yeah. you for that. You're welcome.